Hello, my friend. From my website, graceclips.com, the cross of Christ. We're going to talk about the cross of Christ. And when I say this, please don't start thinking about the wooden cross that is on the wall or in churches. I'm talking what is written in the King James Bible. The preserved, perfect, without error, word of God, preserved for us so that we can know the truth. Let's see what the Apostle Paul, who happens to be the only Apostle that we have to follow in this, the dispensation of the grace of God, what he writes about it. And we go to 1 Corinthians one eighteen and onwards. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Please notice that there is some people that is perishing and some people that are saved. So start to look at humanity as lost people perishing and saved people thriving. This is what we come to understand when we study the Word of God the word of truth, radically divided, together with the Apostle Paul. So those who perish, they think that the preaching of the cross is a foolish thing. Why? Well, come on, you know, you're telling me that 2,000 years ago, on Calvary Hill in, in Israel, 2,000 years ago, actually the year AD 33, the death of this young Jewish rabbi means anything to me? Doesn't make any sense, says this is foolish stuff. But Paul says, Watch out, because unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Why are we saved? Because we are better than they? No, because we have believed the preaching of the cross. We have believed. The gospel of Christ. We have believed that God has given us the free gift of salvation by the cross of Christ, by the death, burial, resurrec resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, I read for the preaching of the cross is to them the perish foolishness. Are you one perishing? For you is a full thing, foolish thing. My English this morning is horrible. I apologize. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. You looking for the power of God? Don't go in Pentecostal churches or other churches where people are screaming and jumping and leaping and pretending to have a power they haven't got. Please go to the King James Bible and read. The preaching of the cross is the power of God. The cross of Christ, it is the power of God. For it is written, this is God speaking now, listen. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. You better, you better understand. Don't play wise when you are dealing with God. Just play the reality where you are a fool. And so you can get wise by getting saved. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Man, people give you a very strange, distorted image of God, like some kind of sloppy sugar factory, you know, when you see what they preach in churches. But look, God is, is not fooling around, you know, if I can use this expression now, <laughs> no pun intended. He's not impressed. With my wisdom, with your wisdom, he's not impressed at all. Do you know who God is? Just for, for the record, he is the creator of the heaven and the earth. Now, if you don't believe that God is the creator, but you believe that you come from the Big Bang, or from monkeys, evolution, whatever, evolution I call it, you're in trouble. 
If you understand who God is, you will understand that, hey, if there is somebody who is really wise, that's the Lord. It's no you, it's no me. Because he has got a purpose here, to destroy the wisdom of the wise. No flesh is going to boast in his presence. Come on. Get real, people. Get real. We're dealing with God. He's so mighty. He's so almighty. He's so powerful. It's so holy. Do you know that these mighty cherubs, cherubim actually, cherubim, which is this special creation that are around the throne, they sing, they shout all the times, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, who is to come. I mean, it's kind of impressive. He holds everything. With the power of his word is so powerful and so wise so intelligent anything good comes from him and he's got a purpose to destroy the wisdom of the wise who will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent signs so falsely called signs don't trust trust the word of god but god is asking where is the wise come on show me one where is the scribe? You know, the scribe is somebody who writes. So, you know, very clever person. Where is the, the disputer of this world? That's what you get in this world. Dispute, disputations, disputing, uh, die tribes, uh, uh, people fighting each other with words. Even more than that. And they are also saying to God, Hey, God, if you, if you... You know, you approach God, say, if you, that's already a wrong step. Go to God and say, yes, it's true. I understand. I'm a sinner. I'm going to hell. But guess what? I accept your offer, your free gift. I believe. This, you know, don't need to, work, to do words. It's between you and God. Just believe that Christ died for your sins. All of them. He was buried. He took them away. It was risen the third day for your justification, as is written. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The Lord knows that our thoughts and actions are vain, vanity. Look at us. We come in this life, we don't even know why. All of a sudden, we are there. We are children. We start to grow straight away. We start to see in our sinful nature that we have in our system, in our I would call it spiritual DNA it comes out. We start lying and being tricky and cheating and happens in the family, happens straight away in society, happens in life. And we live this life sinning, going around sinning and away or another, being boastful, proud, and thinking that we are wise because we go to school, we learn mathematics, geography, all this stuff. And then in reality, yes, you can learn this, but doesn't mean you're wise according to God. Because he says for after that in the wisdom of god listen to this the wisdom of god the world by wisdom knew not god you can know god through wisdom you know like this religions that propose that you through meditation contemplation or you discover ancient texts vedic and this and but come on but be serious if god has spoken listen read believe after in the wisdom for after that in the wisdom of god the world by wisdom knew not god so whatever you come to know through this worldly wisdom is something else but it's not god i tell you now it's written here not because i say <clears throat> okay not because i say i'm nobody i'm just an ambassador for christ i just read the word you should read this word too and believe for yourself don't believe me this is clear, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God. It pleased God. You know, this, I love this. It pleased, it, may, it was his pleasure to do this. By the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So here I'm, at, I'm at, I can't speak English. I'm sorry. I'm here preaching that Jesus Christ the lord jesus christ not just jesus the lord jesus christ that died died you know he didn't faint on that cross for your sins for my sins 
he was buried and on the third day was risen for our justification. If you believe this according to what God says, you are saved straight away. He saves you, seals you, and he, he puts you in Christ and he guarantees you eternity in heavenly places with him in Christ. That's too glorious even to conceive, but you say, no, nah, it doesn't make any sense. That's why. That's why God says he's in the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, not the unbelievers. You don't believe, you're out. Don't go around and say, oh, God is mean, you know. I'm not. It's not God. It's you that reject God because you're in unbelief. But you know what? If you believe, doesn't matter how sinful you are because you are, and I am. He has forgiven you already. He has forgiven you already. It's written. You see, the Jews require a sign. Now, he's giving you the two programs that are in the Bible. Israel and the rest of the world, the Gentiles. The Jews require a sign and the Greeks, which means the Gentiles. So anybody who is not a Jew is a Greek, is a Gentile, after wisdom. So the Jews say, show us a sign. Jesus Christ has written there in the, in the gospel. He just finished to feed a tremendous amount of people with a few fish and bread, multiplying it, just uh, lifting up, say thank you, Father, multiplying, feeding all the... He comes down from the mountain and the Pharisees, the scribes, you know, the, the Jews, saying, give us a sign. I mean, come on. You can't be blind as a bat. Well, you are. And Jesus said, no signs will be given to this crooked and wicked generation. But the signs of the prophet Jonah, as Jonah said, three days and three nights in the belly of the well, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in, in, the, in, the, in the heart of the earth. And then he will rise again, you know. People say, ah, come on, Jonah. Nobody can say in... Uh, you know, in, in the belly of a well and survive. He didn't. People don't know. Jonah died and God resurrected him. And spewed me on, on, on the beach there in Nineveh because Jonah had a commission from God to go to Nineveh to preach repentance to these people because God wanted to save them. You see, that's what you don't get because Satan has blinded you. God wants to save you. And he wants to save you by grace because, you know... He, you can't save yourself. Oh, yes, you can say, I got baptized in water. Well, guess what? You just had a bath. You were, you were a dry sinner. You went in the water together with some pastor who said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You went down and you came out a wet sinner. Nothing can change it. God forbid you die in that moment. You split hell wide open and the flames of hell will dry up your water in very fast. Why am I saying this? You really nasty, Roberto. It's written, go and preach the gospel and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Hey, that's the great commission to Israel, to the twelve, to Peter and the eleven. The twelve apostles had to preach that, not us. You know why? Because something changed in Acts 9. After the Israel rejected the kingdom and the kingdom and rejected the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit was speaking through the mouth of Stephen who was filled with the Holy Ghost, and when practically they rejected the Holy Spirit, at that point they committed the famous blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, Israel stumbled and Israel fell. And we can see in the book of Acts at the end, Acts 28, Israel is finished. It's set aside. It's set aside. And God called his enemy number one, the Apostle Paul, and made of him the Apostle, teacher, preacher of the Gentiles, and and told him and gave him the revelation of the mystery, the gospel of grace in this, the dispensation of the grace of God. They said, go and preach. If they believe, they get saved by grace through faith. No works. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. I finish with this. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But for us who believe the salvation, go to this website gracecliffs.com and find out 
all about it. Bye-bye.